This is a pine needle or a pine leaf. The leaves, as we've said out in the forest, the leaves are actually needle shaped. Notice how the shape is so different. In evergreens, conifers, things like that, they are much thicker. Notice how thick this needle is, this leaf is. There's two of them here. In fact, what you're looking at are two, two separate needles, but you can see each one is so thick and so shaped differently. Some are totally square. Some are diamond shaped, but they're very, very thick. Very, very thick compared to like what we saw with the maple. Remember, maples are thin, they're gonna lose water. These are very thick. They are designed to be able to hold the water even though the environment outside, the, the um, water vapor in the air outside is very low, they do not lose their water very easily um, because they are so well designed. I just want you to notice first how thick these are. And again, this slide has been permanently stained so that you can see certain features. And we're gonna take a look at this at higher magnification and let you see how cool this is. Take a look at this. Now the problem we're gonna have here is even though it's a skinny little pine needle, these are, get, these, these are big. They're much thicker. And because they're so much thicker, we can't even see the whole slide or the whole specimen basically on, on the camera right now. But what you're gonna notice, look at the epidermis. Now when I say epidermis, just like your skin is your epidermis, your outer covering, these leaves have an epidermis also. Notice how thick it is and how many like layers of cells you're gonna start to notice. Then you have the column cells underneath the epidermis like we saw with the others and inside are very, very dark discs. Those dark discs are the chloroplasts. And so you start to see that there's some similar structure to it, but these are different. And then on the inside, there's a whole lot of storage area um, and, and xylem and phloem. It's the vein. There's a vein that goes through the center, and that's what we're looking at here. There's xylem and the phloem. Xylem is bigger. Uh, phloem is more compressed and smaller in size. But um, as we take a look at this, um, we're going to go to a higher magnification, and you're going to see some this is so cool. You're gonna see some really interesting things with this. This is at 400 magnification now. Let's focus this in. Oh my gosh, we're in the middle of the needle. We're in the vein of the needle, of the leaf itself. So we're gonna move outward a little bit. Oh, look at this now. You can see on the outside, on the extreme left of your vision, there's this pinkish color. That is the waxy covering. But notice that this epidermis is at least three cells thick, three cells. The oak, the maples and stuff only have one cell thickness underneath that waxy covering. These have three cells to help protect it. And notice how thick their, their cell walls are, how they're protected. And so they have a very, very thick coating on them. Next, you have the columns going across here with, and they're all clustered together, these little chloroplasts, um, which would be bright green. And you can see these and being bright green and stuff. And so um, that's where the photosynthesis is taking place. Then you have another big layer of cells underneath that. Then you get into, oh, here's the xylem and the phloem. Right in the center, you're gonna see some big pink, uh, Whole, like cells with big holes in them. They're just like empty cells. Those are xylems. The ones that are purplish in color, bluish purple, they're smaller in size, they have a dark nucleus, those are the phloem. They move the sugars and stuff. But you can see how this is all set up. It's, little, it's very different than what you saw with the, the maple. I wanna keep going across and show you something here. Oh, look at this. Looks like a beak of a bird or something, doesn't it? like teeth or something, a mouth. These are guard cells. This cell, uh, or these, this leaf here, this, this needle, when it was put like this and sliced and preserved and stained, the guard cell is open. You can see how air moves in and out of the needle. And these are cells that would be closed up and then they open up to release the gases or allow moisture and stuff in. That's the guard cells, but again, the guard cell is on the underside, basically, of the needle or the leaf. Again, look at how thick that epidermis is. Why is the epidermis so thick? To hold the water inside the leaf. So in the wintertime, when the humidity is low, the water vapor in the air is low, the leaf would tend to just, the, the water to come out of the leaf. 
but God has designed these with these little automated little cells, uh, guard cells to open and close, to keep water in there, to regulate it. And also, um, this prevents the water from uh, leaving and dehydrating the plant. As I said out in the field, um, when we were talking about these also, there's other chemicals that are in here. Some conifers actually produce a chemical called ethylene glycol, which is very similar to antifreeze, so that the, the tree does not freeze a solid and uh, turn to ice crystals, which could break things up. And there's other chemicals that God has designed to do this. I mean, isn't this brilliant? Isn't this showing a tremendous design, these factories, and how this is all put together? It just boggles my mind that people can look through a microscope and not see these factories and how well they're designed. It's amazing. And if there's a designer, there's a designer. This is evidence to me that there is a God. This does not show random fluctuations whatsoever. Everything is so organized and balanced down to the molecular level, down to the molecules. Shows us how cool God is. I thank God that he gave me the eyes of a biologist that I can see his handiwork in this. This is so cool. But that's why you see the difference between evergreen trees, which can hold the water because of all the insulation basically that they have and chemicals to help them, as opposed to a maple, a leaf, an elm, uh, an oak, they have to lose their leaves or they lose too much water and can damage the plant. Support the show. Become a donor at evidenceforfaith.org give. 